We have uh, six folks on their feet ready to ask questions. We're approaching the, the hour of a, of a nice reception, so let's uh, try to make brief comments or uh, questions, rather, please. Yeah, Dr. Rice, I'm the Yonhap Television News Report. It's the Korean Television News Network. Uh, um, Secretary of State nominee, Mr. Powell, told uh, this morning the United States uh, will review a thoroughly relationship with North Korea. And President-elect Bush mentioned uh, about the possible missile agreement with North Korea in the New York Times interview. So is there any possibility to, for the new Bush administration to make uh, missile agreement uh, with North Korea? I think that uh, General Paul's point is the best one to make. Uh, we're a new administration, and we now have to uh, review a whole range of policy issues before us. I think we have a lot of due diligence to do, and it's important that we take the time to do it. So uh, I would not put this in any different category. I think there are a number of issues that we have to review. Thank you. Kirk Bessiner from the U.S. Institute of Peace Falcons Initiative. Ms. Rice, uh, recently the President questioning to Yugoslavia has been pretty dismissive of the International War Crimes Tribunal at The Hague and Yugoslavia's obligations toward it in, in dealing with the indicted war criminal, President Slobodan Milosevic, and others. Will this war crimes accountability issue be a fundamental pillar of American policy in the Bush administration toward the Balkans? Well, of, of course, the United States is on record as uh, believing that Milosevic should be apprehended and turned over to The Hague. That's clear. Uh, and I wouldn't expect any, any change in that. Uh, the, the question of exactly how to manage this with a hopefully new democratic Serbia, uh, I think we will want to leave to the management of the issue. I don't think that pronouncements now are going to be helpful to that process. Um, we, we do want to encourage, and I want to say very clearly, that we have a great interest in the emergence of a democratic regime in Belgrade uh, as a potential partner for stability in the region. Um, and uh, there is a lot to do to clean up the mess that Milosevic left in a variety of ways, including Milosevic himself. But I think that the uh, the issue of exactly how to best deal with the Kuznetsa regime about this, I think we, we need to leave to those discussions. Barbara Slavin of USA Today. Um, I wanted to press you a little bit more on Iraq. You and Colin Powell have both talked about re-energizing sanctions, but as, as you speak today, the Iraqis are sending oil into Syria, which I believe is allowing the Syrians to export more of their own oil for hard currency. They're signing new trade agreements with Jordan, which vastly increased the uh, amount of oil that's going to Jordan and Jordanian goods going back. Uh, they are busting out of sanctions all over. How do you propose to put your finger back in all of these sites and somehow put this regime back together when it is clearly eroding? Barbara, I think that it's obviously very clear that we have a big job in trying to re-energize the sanctions. There's no doubt that it has eroded considerably over the last several years. Uh, the president-elect spoke to this in his interview, uh, saying, I think, that uh, they've become something of Swiss cheese, I think he called it. Uh, but this is what diplomacy is about, and I think that you're just going to have to convince uh, the important powers here, and I mean not just the firm five, but the important powers in the region, that uh, we need to rededicate ourselves to uh, making certain that Saddam Hussein does not turn himself into a terrorist through his weapons of mass destruction or that he does not threaten his neighbors. He signed on to certain obligations under uh, UN resolutions in uh, 1991, and uh, he needs to be held to them. So this is a major diplomatic effort, I'd be the first to admit, but I think that we're going to have to take it on uh, because no one wants to see Saddam Hussein escape his box. Jonathan Landay with Knight Ritter News uh, Papers. During the campaign, Governor Bush pledged to increase military spending by $45 billion over a decade. That money did not include uh, additional funds for national missile defense. He's made national missile defense deployment a prime uh, objective. Uh, how are, uh, do you intend to increase uh, spending for national missile defense? If so, by how much? And how are you going to do it given the 50 to $100 billion mismatch per year in the Pentagon spending plan? Well, first we're going to get in office and uh, <laughs> take, <all right. laughs> and
and uh, take a look at where we are. Uh, I said several times on the campaign trail, uh, you do not have the resources on the campaign trail to do uh, a careful and thoughtful analysis of what your defense spending plans ought to be. You simply don't. And what the president-elect has pledged, pledged in the campaign and has pledged again, is that he intends a thorough review of uh, the military, of um, the requirements of the military modernization. He's concerned about uh, the troops and uh, issues for the troops. And that he intends to have a strategic plan from which to proceed to make important spending decisions and important allocation decisions between the many competing priorities uh, in the defense budget. And uh, I think until he's had an opportunity to do that, uh, it's going to be rather difficult to talk about what we're going to spend precisely here and precisely there. But he is committed to doing that review. I was tempted to say welcome to Washington, <laughs> but uh, the last two uh, questions. Hello, Dr. Rice. Emily Woodward from Defense News. Just wanted to ask for your quick comment on a uh, remark uh, by Ari Fletcher at a press briefing earlier this week about uh, the move to uh, bring uh, the senior uh, international economics advisor on, uh, to directly report uh, to you as a means of uh, uh, enhancing uh, the relationship between international trade and national security. Yes. Uh, yes, again, the President elect spoke to this as well. One of the kind of lacuna in American um, foreign policy, particularly as it's developed over the last several years, uh, is, is how to better integrate economic issues with other foreign policy issues. And uh, I think that it's, it, every commission report that I've read about our national security decision making focuses uh, this as one of the problems. I think you can read just about any of the independent studies that have been out there and people focus on this issue. Uh, it is not easy. Uh, there's not a tradition of, um, of very good integration here. But frankly, the economic issues have become so much more important to our foreign policy as a whole that uh, the challenge really has to be taken on. Now, what we will do, and I want to just caution here that we're still trying to figure out exactly how to work out the details, but there will be a deputy assistant to the president for international economic affairs. That person will report, jo report jointly to Larry Lindsay, the assistant for national economic affairs, and to me. And uh, we're going to try to have a kind of seamless single staff that will be responsible for the whole range of issues from those that are uh, more traditional foreign policy with an economic uh, content to those that have probably been traditionally thought of as economic but clearly have a strategic overlay. And so uh, I'm certain that there are some international economic issues that don't fall into <laughs> category, either of these categories, but Larry and I are committed to making this work. Uh, this is a joint idea. It's a joint proposal that we made to the um, to the president-elect who himself had identified the problem. And one of the reasons that I think he was aware of the problem is that he's dealt a lot with Mexico. And so he could see all the various pieces that have to be put together. So I think that uh, we, will, we will try to make this work. I'm quite confident that we can because we have a lot of commitment to making it work. But it could be one of the more important innovations um, that we try and make. Last question. Valerie LeVan, Voice of America. You emphasize the importance of forming good relationships with our allies and also with other great powers. And I was wondering how you would reconcile the importance of this with plans for a uh, national missile defense system, given the criticism and the opposition that this has drawn at an international level. Strong relationships don't mean that you'll always agree. And it's important to make that distinction. But it does mean that, particularly with allies and friends, you will always be committed to talk and consult and try to understand each other better and, where possible, to move toward uh, agreement. And uh, on national missile defense, the president-elect is committed to doing what he believes he needs to do as commander-in-chief. He has set as one of the criteria for any national missile defense that it has to protect not just us, but our allies. He does not want to decoupling. Um, this will take diplomacy. I think that it also probably takes um, understanding the entire complex of nuclear issues. There's 
national missile defense, these proliferation concerns, and of course the, what we will do with offensive forces in these circumstances. And so uh, we're in a different world than we were when uh, the American nuclear arsenal faced off against the Soviet threat of thousands of nuclear warheads. The threats are different, and uh, we'll take some time with our allies and, and friends, and indeed with other interested parties, including the Russians, um, to talk about this new world and uh, to figure out how to address it in an intelligent way. As uh, you join in uh, thanking Dr. Rice, let me just again say <laughs> you've been a terrific audience and uh, we've had a long day and we invite you as you exit to turn slightly to the right and enjoy some receptions, uh, refreshments, and we'll have a little bit of uh, a ceremony about five minutes from now. Thank you.